Hello, it's Jane here from Blooming Boulevards, and I am thinning Smooth Aster. This is a lovely plant. Uh, it's got beautiful blue flowers. It blooms in the fall. It's a native plant, native to southern Ontario. And we gather the seeds in the fall and we stratify them over the winter. That means we keep the seeds in the refrigerator. Uh, I sow them in the beginning of March. So that's just what we've done. We use a potting soil. It's actually called a soil, but it's, it's not. It's a soilless mix. It doesn't have soil in it per se. It's got peat moss and uh, fine bark mix uh, mixed with some perlite. Uh, to keep it very open and well draining because this is a prairie plant. It doesn't like to have wet feet. And um, put the soil in the seed trays, sow the seeds uh, that we've gathered. Uh, and this is about the density of the sowing. You can sow it more thinly than this, but if, they, if you sow it this densely, they help each other um, push through the soil and um, I find it works better that way. So at the stage that they're at now, their roots are starting to uh, have extended. So you can see that they are coming out of their pots. They need to be thinned. Uh, the roots will compete with each other. And so what we're going to do is thin these uh, using some very small little um, embroidery scissors and sometimes it's good to use a uh, pair of tweezers, any kind of tweezers, plastic, metal, that will work. Um, or if you've got very nimble, sort of agile fingers, you can pick through them with your fingers. I do a combination of the of two. Um, sometimes you can pull the whole plug out, separate the seedlings that way, pull them apart, especially if you don't have very many seedlings and you can replant them in back in the seed trays individually. But that can possibly damage the roots. Um, so what you want to do is try and protect the root out of, if at all possible. Uh, the plant can grow a new leaf, but it can't grow. The roots um, will also regrow, but it weakens the plant. The plant loses vigor and it's never going to really take off after the root is damaged. So when you're thinning, you just simply pick through the tray and it's awfully hard to cut your seed babies down. Uh, this is selective. So what I do is I usually try to thin at this stage to two strong plants. And you notice the seedlings are different sizes in the tray. Some are large, some are small. That can happen for all sorts of different reasons. Um, the seeds, the flowers that have more visits by bees tend to produce seeds uh, that are more vigorous. So uh, it's not enough for a bee to dust the flowers with pollen uh, once or twice. What you really need is a flower being visited by a bee and dusted with pollen from a variety of flowers and then that gives it more of a chance to um, uh, have different kinds of sort of um, genetic material that can fertilize the, um, the ovum and then produce a stronger seed. So the more bees, the better the plant. Um, by the way, these, seed, these, these thinning techniques work not just with native plants, but they will work with vegetables or any kind of horticultural plant that you're trying to grow from seed. Okay, and here I pulled one out. You can see it's, this has got a very tiny little leaf, but notice how far the roots will go down. Uh, they're quite deep and this extends almost to um, half the length of the pot right here, just with this tiny little seedling. So what happens when you're thinning and the reason why I like to cut them off at the surface rather than actually pulling them out with tweezers is because I the roots that the seedlings have 
are wrapped around each other. Okay, I'll see if I can do this so you with a tweezer so you can see. You want to separate the little seedling one from the other. It's growing too close together. If I tried to pull that little seedling out that's growing right next to this larger seedling, chances are the roots would be disturbed down in the with in the growing the potting mix and um, these guys this guy's roots are going to get uh, possibly damaged so if you cut it off right there at the base of the plant that will protect the root okay <clears throat> And I'm having trouble because I broke my left uh, wrist in January. It's April now. It's still not completely healed. So my squeezing tweezer ability has been compromised. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just move through the tray and thin this whole tray out so that there's only two or the maximum three, sometimes one if we've got a nice, strong, uh, vigorous seedling right here, one is enough. But I like to sometimes keep a couple, here we are, because eventually these seedlings will be transplanted into a larger pot. Um, I use um, cups, paper cups, with holes punched in the bottom uh, because the pots, it's very good to have the pots be uh, narrower at the opening and deeper so that they the plants remain well drained. Okay, so that's going to happen after these grow on maybe another uh, few centimeters taller and it's got a nice, good, well-developed root ball filling up its container and then I'll just pop it out and transfer it into another pot. I use the same soilless mix uh, that I did for the seeding. Well, okay, people, um, thank you very much. And I hope that that has been helpful to you. Bye for now.